I have services or uh, sermons that I write up, and I go back through them sometimes, and I've done them before. And uh, I chose this one, and to be honest with you, you know, sometimes you look at things, but God's got something in, in store for somebody in here this evening. And I'm just telling you that simply because we just did that last song that it was up there twice, and it talks about following God and having him go, or you go the way that he wants you to go. And I, my title this evening is Choosing the Correct Doors. So I don't know who this is for, but if it's for you, listen up. Because I can tell you right now that God is not going to let you off the hook just because you heard a, song, a couple songs or a song about it and a sermon. He will be pursuing you. So don't think that you're going to get off that easy. But uh, that song really implied what I really want the whole sermon to be about this evening. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to kind of look at things a little bit differently than you normally do. And so um, doors can be considered open or closed, right? I mean, they're there to, to define different areas in your life, but you don't always know what's on the other side of that door. And sometimes when doors you think are open, they become closed and they stop you from going in the direction you want to go. Um, I have a, it actually happened at our house, and it's been years ago, but it reminded me of uh, sometimes doors that we think are open or closed, and the other way it happens. Um, if you've heard my story before, too bad you get to listen again, because like Pastor says, it's my pulpit tonight, you're listening. Um, years ago, Shortly after Michelle and I got married, which is today our an is our anniversary. We have been married for 32 years Aww. today. So you can congratulate her or give her your sympathy later on or whatever you decide to do. Uh, and she will say, who told you? And you say the other part of your couple. So blame me. It's, it's just the way it is. But anyhow, we had uh, been married a short time. And we had a cat. And it's not the one we got now because she had been real old. But the cat's name was Miss M. And the cat was actually, her name was Michelle, but since I'm married to Michelle, it would have got a little confusing in there. So they named the cat Miss M. Now, being the dutiful husband that I am, my wife had just bought curtains for our bedroom. Okay? And she didn't, she had pressed them, but she had to go to the store to get the rod and stuff she wanted to hang them on. And Miss M had a bad habit of laying on our bed. And Michelle had laid the, the uh, curtains out on our bed. And Michelle said, don't let the cat get on them because I'll have to clean them again. So we closed the door. If you go down the hall to the end and make a left, you go into our bedroom. So we closed that door. We made sure she was out in the living room. And then we went around and you can go through the bathroom and go into the other door and go to our bedroom. And so we closed both of those doors. Number one, because I'm not chasing a cat off of it and try to have to explain to her how cat hair got on the curtains. But number two, it's a lot easier. So Michelle leaves, and Miss M, I don't know what her day, what was going on. She must have been having a bad day. I'm not sure. But she knocked a plant over in the living room. And... Her habit was if she got in trouble, she would run to our bedroom and hide under the bed because you can't get to her. We have a queen-size water bed with a double stack of drawers under it, and there's a little places you can go down between them, and she'd run and go down in there and hide out till things kind of calmed down. And so I got her. I picked her up. After she, I, she did it, I saw her do it. I picked her up, and I swatted her behind, and, and I uh, helped her in her projectile headed down the hallway. In other words, she covered some ground. Airmail. And she went, she knew she was in trouble, and she went flying down the hall and made that left turn into the bedroom, and I heard, BAM! And she ran smack into the door. She backed up, and I'm laughing. I'm not going to lie to you, folks. I'm laughing. And she goes around and she goes through the bathroom and makes a hard right and I hear, BAM! She hit the other door. And she comes back out and she's looking down the hall at me like, 
okay? Now, I tell you that she was okay. She didn't, no animals were hurt in this story. I got to put that out there because this is probably going to end up on YouTube. But I tell you that to say that when a door is closed and you think it's open, you can run right into it, okay? And I would say she thought those doors were open, but those doors were closed. And because those doors were closed, she made a bad decision. And, and she used all the force she had thinking she could go through that door even though it was closed, okay? Now, we're kind of the same way in our lives. We think we can walk through doors and, and, and get into different areas even though that door has been closed, Doors are kind of like decisions, in a sense. Because when you step through that door, and that door, if that door is open, and you decide which way you're going to go, because you make the decision if you're going to step through that door or not. Because when you're on this side of the door, everything is still the same. But when you step through that door, things change. For the good and for the bad. Or either one. They can be great things that can happen. I mean, you, when you open a store, you make a decision to either open or close the door inside of your life. Because you can, like Charity was saying earlier, you could walk over to that door and close that door and say, I'm not going to that area anymore. That area is not good for me. I don't want to put myself in the situation that's behind that door. I'm going to close that door. Or I'm going to go over here to this door, and even though it may not always look like the right thing to do, but if God is directing me, I'm going to open this door. And I'm going to step through it. You know, so when we make a decision, we either open or close doors inside of our lives. And sometimes I think we want to go back through and open and close doors that have already gotten done with. We don't need to go into that areas anymore. Leave those areas alone. Now, I am going to say, and this is kind of the, my rough notes here, but when we go through that door or open that door, we have to deal with the repercussions of what happens when we go through that door, good or bad, right? I mean, because God is not going to allow Excuse me, God's not going to stop us from making stupid decisions. We have that ignorant thing called free will, that we step on our own toes all the time, and what we think, we think, we think is the right answer instead of stepping back and asking God what we need to do. What we do is, is we decide, oh, wow, this is what I need to go through here. This, this will be great. Probably one of the worst decisions I ever made in my life was taking a job at a place that I should have never, ever been. The money looked good. It was close. I thought the place that I had been working, I didn't really think that they were going to be in existence very much longer. And when I went to this other place, it was the worst decision I have ever made. It looked good on the outside. But it was the worst decision I ever made. What we need to do is, is we need to be informed before we open or close a door. We need to pursue what God wants us to do in that situation. Now we're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14, verse 14. And I'm going to read it to you. And it says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. The world, Satan, wants us to live a defeated life. He does not want you to have victory in any area, in anything you do. He wants you to stumble. He wants you to fall. He wants you to have difficulty. And it's not just in jobs, finances, but he wants it to be in relationships. He wants you to think that you're not as good as other people. He wants you to think that nobody cares for you. 
right? You know, I, I said, I've been, Michelle and I have been married today for 32 years. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. She is. Now, do we always agree on everything that happens? No. But I cannot imagine myself not being married to her. That is probably the best door I ever walked through. And she didn't shut it on me. You might be surprised, but she's kind of a stout little gal. Watch her. Okay? But what I'm saying is, is that the world at the time would have said, you're crazy. There's all these other women out there. Why are you tying yourself up with this one person? Well, you know, I love her, and she puts up with me. There's a lot, a lot else can go on there. Okay? Satan will use the trickery of men, the craftiness of deceitful plotting, to cause you to stay in a life of defeat and abuse. Satan lies to you. If you know that going in, you understand anything that he says is wrong. Okay? Now, anything he says may sound like it's truth, because any, the, most, the best lie is the one that has just a little bit of truth in it. Not completely, but just a little bit. And it confuses you. Because when you look at it, it makes sense in our peanut brains that that's what should be. But in all honesty, when you look at it and you stand back, what looks good on the outside may be rotted on the inside. Because he will lie to you and give you trickery and make it look like that's the best thing that could ever happen. But what we got to understand is, is when we go to Jesus and ask him about the situation, Jesus wants you to live a life of victory in everything you do. Not just little stuff, but the, the big stuff and everything that happens in your marriage, with your children. I tell people today, I am reaping the benefits of my children today from what I had to put up with and do when, I was, when they were real little. Okay? Was it an easy way? Did it mean that, that every decision I made as a parent was right? No, it's not. But when God is directing what you do, and you're putting Him as a priority inside of your life, and putting Him inside of your family, then the directions that you go will be the right ones. Now, it may take you a little bit longer to get there if you do it your own way, but if you follow what He's telling you to do, he will help you through it. And if you messed up in the past, let me tell you now that he is the restorer. And things can be fixed. Satan wants you to be so confused that you can't make a good decision. Have you ever said, I just don't know what to do? Because every way you look in the natural, it cannot happen. Anybody else ever been there? Okay. But the thing you've got to remember is, is when you stand back and look at it and say, God, what do I do on this one? Jesus, which way do I go? He will give you the answer. Now, I did not say it will be the answer you want. What I said was he will give you the answer. And it will work out. Jesus wants to help you to make the correct decisions. In anything and everything you do in life. Now, everything that we have made up to this point, if, you, if you've made bad decisions, you're going to deal with the repercussions. There's nothing you can, that, that's not going to change. That's going to happen. Okay? Because you have made those decisions, you have to live with those decisions. But I'm telling you now, when you ask Jesus, it can make it a whole lot easier to deal with those situations because your priorities change. What you think ought to be going on now becomes what he thinks ought to be going on. And when you do that, the direction you go and the things you do and your priorities change. Jesus wants to help you to open the correct doors, to make the correct decisions. The doors that will lead to the victory in your life. Okay, What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the very first door that you need to open to have victory inside of your life. 
We're going to go to Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. And it says, this is Jesus speaking, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now, I believe most of you in here are Christians. But I also know that if you've got the answer to somebody else's problems and you can give it to them, sometimes it helps them out too. So this is the very first step you need to do. What this is is we need to accept Christ as our Savior. Jesus speaking here, he says, I stand at the door and knock. Now I'm going to tell you all something. If you've ever been someplace and you knock on the door and nobody's home, you leave. Jesus don't leave. Jesus keeps knocking, and he keeps knocking, and he keeps knocking. And he's not going to be turned away by your ignorance, because we all have had it. But what he is going to do is, is he is going to say, hey, I'm out here. I'm waiting for you so that I can help you to do the right thing. But come, I'm going to keep knocking on the door. If anyone hears my voice... So not only is he knocking, he's speaking to you. The Holy Spirit pricks your heart and, 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 and brings to your members the things that God wants you to have happen inside of your life. He comes, he works on you. He tenderizes your heart to accept what's going on. And I say that in the sense of, the Holy, of, of Jesus speaking to you. So he's going to keep talking to you and he's going to keep knocking on the door. Now our job comes. If you've ever seen that famous painting that has Jesus standing at the door and knocking, if you've ever noticed, there is no door handle on the outside of the door. Because Jesus can't open that door. The only person that can open that door is you. You have to make that decision. You have to physically get up, and maybe it's just in your mind, but you have to get up, you have to go over and open that door and allow Christ to come in to you. Now, there's not a fee for this, but there is a whole lot of blessing that goes with it. I will open the door. I will come into him. In other words, Jesus isn't pulling you out of what you are to change to become to him. He's going into wherever you are to meet him. So he is changing the situation out of what he is to come to be with you. I don't know about you, but I've been some places I don't think Jesus would go. But I'm telling you now, he was already there. And it didn't make any difference where you're at at that time when you open that door and allow him in. He is going to come in. Because there is nothing, again, I say nothing, that you can do that can take you away from him. There's no place you can be. There's nothing you have done. Whatever the situation is that's going on inside of your life right now, if you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, He wants to meet you right where you're at. And that could be in a bar, that could be out on the street, that could be any place. Why? Because He loves you and He wants the best for you. And what will He do when He does? And dine with Him and He with me. He will be in fellowship with you. He makes a promise that if you'll open that door, He will come and be with you. And it doesn't say, and after 30 minutes, I'm going home. It doesn't say that, does it? No. It doesn't say, if things get tough, I'll be leaving. It doesn't say that either. Right? I take this as a continuous action, which will be for eternity. He will be with you and you with him forever. We're going to slip down... We're not going to be very long this evening, but I want to go to Romans 12, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And verse says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world. When you have stepped out of 
what you're in right now and step through that door and be in relationship and Jesus comes in to be with you, you need to change. Don't drag, don't, don't drag Jesus back into the garbage. Allow Jesus to drag you out of the garbage, to change those doors, to open them, to open the doors of life the areas of victory that we need to have. And I think each and every one of us in here has different goals and, and things that we want to do to achieve. Okay, Each person in here has different uh, abilities. Okay, But the great thing is, is Jesus wants to be with you in all those areas. He wants you to be able to have the great peace that you have in everything you do, no matter what the situation is. Silas can play instruments He's my son, but I can't sing to lick a no nothing. It's sad. It is sad. Okay? Can't do it. But I also, when I pick up a camera, I've been told I'm pretty good at it. Okay? So what you've got to think of is, is, is allow the abilities that you have to be used to glorify God inside of your life. And when you do that, the abilities you have, he will take those abilities and bless them. And you don't know what your ability could be used for. You think, I can't do that, or I'm not any good at this, or how can I do that? You know what? It really doesn't matter, because God is going to take you and use your abilities to do the things that are going to confuse the rest of the world, because the miraculous things that he allows you to be able to do, you can do through him. Okay? But what we need to do is, as it says here, is do not be conformed to this world. Don't allow the world to drag you back into the muck that Jesus has got you out of. Okay? I, I think of, and this is kind of an example, but I think of when Jesus walked on the water. Okay? I think of the water that was underneath him was in a storm, and it was going crazy, and it was doing everything, and it was just going nuts, and, 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 and it was dangerous if you were in the boat on that water, okay? But Jesus wasn't in that water. Jesus was above that water. And I don't believe his sandals got wet. I truly don't. I don't think that what was going on underneath his feet caused him any difficulty at all. And I believe we can be the exact same way. I think that when we can, maybe we don't walk on the swimming pool, but when we look at it, we walk across the water, and we realize that what's underneath our feet is underneath our feet. And I'm not going to allow the gunk of what's splashing up to get onto me because I am different than I was beforehand. And so when Jesus reached out and took hold of Peter and picked him up, he took him out of the garbage that he had been in. He lifted him up to be at the same place that Jesus was. And Jesus is never going to turn loose of him. It's Peter's fear that caused him to sink. It was nothing that Jesus did. Because Jesus spoke the words and gave him the authority to be able to walk out that way, to take that step out of the boat. So what are we doing? Are we afraid that we're going to suddenly fall back into the world? I'm telling you all now, folks, it's the door that you need to close to the world and open the other door to the life that God wants you to lead. And when you do that, what well, used to be where you were running around and the gunk you were in, you will no longer be there. But you will be transformed. Transformed is different than it was before. By the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You open the Word of God and get the Word of God out on the inside of you. God will give you back that word. I always find it interesting that people say, God could bring back the word of God to your remembrance, but you can't remember something you have never read. Right? If you've never heard it, you can't remember it. But when you do, and you're in need of it, God will give it to you. By transforming, by the renewing of your mind that you may be proved what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What you've got to remember is, is God has already accepted you exactly how you are. 
all the stupid stuff you've done, all the ignorant mistakes you've made, all the times you should have never opened that door. Why is it that man wants to run right up to the edge of whatever they think they shouldn't be into and look down? I'll get just as close as I possibly can to it. I won't go into it, but I'll get just as close as I can. I'll run right up and I'll grab the door handle and see if it's locked. Get away from the door. We don't even need to go there. Leave the door closed. Last thing I want to do is accidentally fall through the door. And being stupid, we have done that. And the last verse I have this evening is, is Revelation 3, 21. It says, to him who overcomes. Now, overcome is to conquer, prevail, get the victory. I will grant to sit with me on my throne also, now excuse me, and I also overcome and sat down with the, my father on his throne. What Jesus is telling you here is, I will have you to come and sit with me. I will, be, I will be on the throne and you will be with me. You will be an overcomer. What looks like you could never have victory inside of your life, Jesus, by accepting him, he has granted you the authority to sit by God. I don't know about you, but I think that would be a pretty good place to be. be a great place to be. But what people think is, is they're so worried about living this life and, 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 and how am I going to get through tomorrow and the bills and all that stuff. God said he'll provide for you. Does that mean he's going to write you a check and mail it to you? No. But you know what? Sometimes being, standing back and watching how it goes, I knew a lady one time that her, say, her statement was, hide and watch. I want to see how he does it. I want to understand it. I want to see how he works through this person to that person to that person to that person to that person. And then it comes back to me. To understand how God's able to do those things. Does it mean that I will understand everything? No. But sometimes it's nice just to sit and watch. See how it happens. See what he's going to do inside of your life. Because the things that you think could never, ever, ever come about could be very commonplace. God's in the business of miracles, folks. I think we hinder him by not allowing him to work inside of our lives. So my question to you this evening is, have you opened the door to Jesus? And have you closed the door to the world? And if you have done that, good. Hide and watch. See how God can work inside of your life. But if you have not, you're still living in the world of deceit and confusion and not allowing God to work inside of your life, and you're going to be spending eternity in hell because Jesus is the only answer that can get us to heaven. So my challenge to you this evening is if you have not accepted God or accepted Jesus as your Savior, I challenge you to come up here this evening. Now, am I going to have any magic words that has all the answers? No. Because I'm telling you now, I, I truly believe that if you stood up this evening here in just a minute and you came out of your pew and you took one step towards coming up here to accept Christ and you died of a heart attack, I believe you'd go to heaven. It's not what man knows, but it's what God knows. So when God and you get together, you can do anything. So how's your situation in the doors? Are they closed? Are they open? Are you looking through them? Are you trying to see through the windows of what things might be? Because I'm telling you now, God doesn't give you answers to all the questions before you get to the door. But what he does say, follow me and I will give you victory. Let's go ahead and stand on our feet and we're going to have a short invitation. Kathy's not going, so I guess we're not playing. But what I'd like to do is, is just open the altars for a couple minutes. And like I said, if you have not accepted Christ, come up and I'd love to pray with you. But if you just need to say, you know what, God, I, I've got too much going on and, and, and I need to close some doors inside of my life and I need you to help me as I go through them and open them. Open the ones that you want me to open and help me to close the ones that I need to close. So we're going to stand here for just a couple minutes, and, and as we do, just close your eyes, bow your heads, and just thank God for being who he is.
God, I just thank you so much for loving us and caring for us, for sending Jesus to pay my penalty upon the cross, Lord God. I just thank you that you love us and care for us. I ask you to be with everyone here this evening and uh, just give us safety as we go through the, tr through the rest of the week and for all you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We uh, also have an offering plate up here if you'd like to uh, do your offering this evening. We'd love to, as they jokingly say, the church will always take your money. So not a problem there. It's an amen. Thank you for coming. We're closed. <laughs>